well hello and welcome to my second video um, yeah the MGZR went off to its new home quite sad I was quite um, quite uh, reflective that evening shall we say uh, when the uh, the purchaser came to uh, to collect it hopefully um, he's gonna keep in touch and uh, send me some videos or pictures of what he's doing with it but uh, yeah I bet he had a fun drive home he had quite a way to get home so I was a little bit, little bit envious. It's probably the longest drive it's had since uh, since I bought it. So, so uh, I, my last uh, last time I um, so last time I mentioned that I've got something else coming, and uh, I'm not going to show you that today. But uh, that's that's hopefully going to be a video in the next week or two. Uh, but what I want to show you is another car that uh, is in our family, and that is really annoying. But that car alarm is going off chose this spot because it was quiet but never mind so um, yes another car in our in our family um, it's uh, yeah, something a bit different, but I'll show you around it. So we'll just spin the camera around. And here we have it. A 2014 Fiat Panda 4x4. So I'll have a little walk around the outside of it. So this is the third generation of the um, Fiat Panda. I think the first was launched in 1980. The real boxy, classic Panda shape that everyone knows. Uh, then there was another generation in the 1990s, there was a bit of a gap in production, then another generation in the 1990s, and then the third generation, uh, Fiat Panda, was launched in 2011, uh, to some, to some acclaim. So this one's done about 60,000 miles, um, it's beginning to show its age, so uh, one thing we need to look at is some of the trim, so you can see down here we've got this bit of trim on the door that's come loose so that's a repair that i need to do um it's also got these plastic trims around the wheel arches and that's this one's in um two pieces so it's actually come there's a piece that's come off here it just needs gluing back on so that's another job um paint's beginning to go a little bit flat so it needs it needs a really good polish um i did polish the bonnet um last year but it's not really taken it that well so i need to give the bodywork some attention a few scuffs um and we've got the same trim piece missing here along with a bit of a loose looseness on the um the rear wheel arch plus this uh bit of custom bodywork bit of a dent in there so that needs to be pulled out so i'm gonna try and find a local body shop to get that sorted out um got the uh, another car that's coming which is going to need some bodywork attention as well so it'll be good to find someone reliable in this area to to do that um, so there's some other bits um, inside that need some attention so I don't know if you can quite see it down here but the glove box the catch is actually gone so to stop the glove box lid um, digging into people's shins I've actually had to take the catch out and tape it up, so need to get that sorted out, um, get this tape off just to make that nice. Uh, I've got no intention of selling this car, this is my other half's car, she loves it, will not part for it, from it. Um, another bit of trim up here gone, so the, the clip that holds the passenger side um, sun visor in has, has broken, so that needs replacing. Um, but Fiat seems to be pretty good for parts, so we had... Um, <coughs> <coughs> yeah had a had a, a, a part needed to the handbrake um the handbrake sensor went last year and uh, was able to get the part for about 40 quid and got someone to slap it on um so yeah even little parts seem to be quite easy to get still with fiat so that's good news what about this car inside so it's actually quite well equipped um we've got uh rev counter we've got uh speedo and we've got an electronic display in the middle with the fuel and temperature um got a decent radio uh, with cd player um and it's got this blue and me bluetooth so you can play uh, play music from your phone and connect up your phone uh, with the blue and me you have got a usb just down 
down in the centre console and a power outlet. It's actually a six speed manual. Um, it, it's a really free revving engine and we'll, we'll have a look at that in a while. Um, plenty of uh, plenty of buttons here. So we've got city mode, which makes the steering a little bit lighter. We can adjust our headlights. We've got the, uh, the actual car settings are dealt with through this button. Takes a bit of getting used to. Uh, hazard warning lights nice and central uh, we've got front and rear fog lights and a start stop function so for a small car it's really well equipped and of course this isn't just any uh, Fiat this is the Fiat Panda 4x4 so the Fiat Panda 4x4 is a continual um, 4x4 system and uh, it's it's yeah it's really good in the snow it's it's uh, I remember about three years ago we, we were up and down some hills uh, to see family and you know the, the car just took these lanes that hadn't been gritted with no issue at all um, so it's a continual 4x4 the um, there's an electronic um, limited differential which is activated by this button here so that has some sensors on it and what that does is um, and what that does is uh, 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 basically the sensors will detect if they slip on a wheel and uh, they'll put a torque to a different wheel to, to keep you going basically so it's, it's pretty it's pretty clever like that so having a look under the bonnet the um, this Panda is powered by the Fiat uh, twin air turbo engine so it's a straight two-cylinder um, sounds a bit sewing machiney but um, once you get up to, to cruise, and you're cruising along at 70, 80 miles an hour, not that I ever go 80 miles an hour in it, un understandably, um, it, it settles down, it's nice and quiet, and it purrs, it purrs along quite nicely. Um, things to be aware of with the, the, the Fiat Twin Air engine is um, that it will, it will eat a lot of oil. It's quite, you know, with the turbo, it's, 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 it's using quite a lot of oil, so very important uh, to check the oil levels regularly. Um, in terms of servicing this vehicle, it's quite difficult to do unless you've got a, uh, a, a lift uh, because you've got two steel plates, one under the front uh, protecting the, 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 the drive shafts and then you've got one under the, the back protecting the, the differential and the, the drive shafts at the rear because you know, this is a four-wheel drive car. So these two steel plates have to be taken off. Um, it makes sorting out the rear brakes um, potentially expensive so I think I had the brakes done on this 18 months ago and it cost 400 quid just for you know new brakes uh, new discs and pads um, so that's something to, to be mindful of if you are considering buying one of these cars um, the, the the plate at the front also makes it difficult to do a, an oil change at home unless you can get the car really up high you've got about six seven bolts on the steel plate underneath the front and you need to get that plate off to get to the sump plug and the oil filter so that's really just uh, something to bear in mind but they are actually surprisingly perky cars for a four-wheel drive it's actually quite revvy and it pulls you know it, it whizzes along quite nicely so you can actually surprise your passengers if you if you do decide to to get the car up into the uh, the higher rev ranges um, Nice big battery, um, and then yeah, quite a simple layout inside with the header tank over here. Usual cover, so we can't really see what's going on. I remember I, I, I did do a basic service. Well, I tried to do a basic service, but got stymied by the, uh, the the steel plate underneath the front, so I couldn't do the oil change. But I bought three cylinders, thinking it was a three cylinder car, three spark plugs. Sorry, thinking it was a three cylinder car, and I needed to use two. So um, yeah. Great fun though, great fun to, to, to work on if you've got a ramp. And this is a five door model. You have got um, actually decent legroom. If the seats aren't too far back, and I'm a, I'm a little midget, so um, you know I sit fairly far, far forward. Um, but yeah, if you've got the seats in a reasonable position, you've actually got a fair bit of legroom. And you've got a, a boot that's got a decent amount of height, um, but not a terrific amount of width. And you've got a boot that's got um, you know a nice amount of height but hasn't got a tremendous amount of width so you can get your weekly shopping in it's a, it's a the one thing I will say with this car if you're going to a you know a car park supermarket car park multi-story car park it is very maneuverable um, it is narrow it's a very narrow car um, which we'll come on to a bit in a bit when we go for a drive um, but yeah great for getting into little parking spaces um, we've taken this on weekend breaks and it's uh, 
this phone up. I've just spotted some more body damage down here, which needs sorting out. So a bit of a bit of a scuff on this bumper. Uh, so yeah, we do need to get this car to a body shop fairly soon. So what's it like to drive? Let's take it for a little spin and see what happens. I'm going to pop the aircon on. Um, Spring is beginning to turn into summer, finally. Um, so the first thing I said, low, low speeds, it's got quite a, I think I said earlier, sewing machine -y sound to the engine, uh, because it is just a two cylinder. But once you get up to speed and just get into your highest gear, it'll just sit and purr along quite nicely. One thing to note with these cars, they are very narrow. Um, if you've got two adults in the front, you are, you know, you are touching arms, um, uh, whether you like it or not. So it's, you know, you want to make sure you know your passenger quite well. So you haven't got any armrests um, on in the middle. So it's, you know, your 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 left hand is left arm is free. <coughs> uh, you have got a little bit of an armrest here. Um, your window controls are actually in front of the, uh, the gear lever, um, which you do get used to. I'm used to having them on the door in my own vehicles, but uh, you do get used to having them down there. The other thing with the car is you do have an eco mode, and that just cuts some of the power. So I've got it off eco mode at the moment. Um, if I put eco mode on everything just feels a bit tighter it, the revs the, the uh, ability to free rev diminishes and that means you can get a you know really respectable mpg uh, from this vehicle The Fiat uh, Twin Air Turbo engine actually won a really prestigious award. Uh, actually, I don't know if it's prestigious or not, uh, but it won the International Engine of the Year Award um, for the sub one litre category um, in 2011. I think it actually won four, four different categories, so this really is an Oscar winning engine. quite as perky and rorty <coughs> as when the EK mode is turned off so you probably can't hear that on the video too well but the moment I just press that button we're, we're doing 30 miles an hour we're in uh, third gear uh, revving at three and a half thousand rpm and you just felt a little bit of a, <coughs> a surge as I pressed the uh, press the eco button and turned it off being a bit stymied at the moment by traffic which is slightly annoying but um, it is Saturday, so we shouldn't get too stressed.
are in sixth gear and it's cruising along really quietly. So it's only when you're accelerating hard or um, getting the car going from, from, from the uh, standing start that you get the real sewing machine -y, uh, noise from the engine. But yeah, 60 miles an hour on a, on a, a minor A road, it's, it's purring along very quietly. Um, not too much road noise. Uh, yeah, really nice. driving along here just uh, you know thank you for those who watched my first video hopefully you're going to enjoy or you have enjoyed this second video um, please do like please subscribe uh, as I say next next time we're going to be looking at something from the MG Rover group which uh, has fallen into my possession um, and I'm really looking forward to, to bringing you that video uh, hopefully in the next week or two Oh look, a milk lorry. Storks are nice and solid. Um, I was a bit wary with Italian cars, but this is an Italian car and they are designed nicely and uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. So. so revving up, put eco mode on, just slightly just holds it back in. But it costs, even with the current fuel prices, it costs about 44 quid to fill this car up. Um, that will do a uh, hundred miles uh, of commuting plus some left over so um, about a th 
yeah, saying half a tank, but um, a shorter week last week. But yeah, this will do. This will do a week's driving, um, 140, 150 miles in bad traffic. So on a cruise, it's even more efficient. end of this little video so a uh, few jobs to do on this car but uh, yeah we can get it looking nice the one thing I do say is this green this metallic green I don't know the name of the color I should find out really is absolutely lovely and when it has been cleaned uh, cleaned up it looks great if we get the paintwork polished really nicely get these bodywork issues sorted out it's gonna be a really nice looking car so thank you for watching and uh, see you again next time with hopefully something from the MG Rover stable bye for now